Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're getting an update on the spotted lanternfly with Emily Schwackhammer from the Penn State Horticultural Extension Service from Montgomery County. Emily will be joining us for two segments to discuss what you can do to help stop this serious invading pest. Then we're going to talk about African violets and their care. So stay tuned and we'll be back after this short break. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, good morning, Emily. Thank you for joining us. Um, The spotter and lanternfly is a very serious problem that not many people have heard of. Why should people be afraid or concerned? Sure. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, The spotted lanternfly threatens agriculture, so it threatens trees and timber production, but also some of our favorite food crops, including fruit and grapes, and also hops. hops. So it affects agriculture, but it also affects residential and public landscapes and really our quality of life. Huh. You know... I've talked to different people about it, and mostly homeowners say, well, how is it going to affect me? Dig into more of the the quality of life. Sure. Um, The people that have been living in the area affected by spotted lanternfly know that it um, can build to really high populations in your landscape. So we have people that have been observing thousands of insects on their landscape trees, Of course, they're concerned about the health of those trees, and we don't really know long-term how it's affecting the health. Um, Landscape trees are really important for shade and, you know, just the quality of life um, in your landscape, your property values. But also, when you have thousands of insects and they secrete a partially digested tree sap called honeydew... (laughs) And the honeydew deposits underneath these insects, and then black sooty mold will grow on that honeydew, and a foul odor develops. So it really makes these landscapes just icky to be in. (laughs) And the insects will move around, and, you know, they're not afraid to jump on you, and, you know, that's not pleasant. They don't bite people, but... You know, it's still not fun to have insects landing on you. Right. Your, if, if anybody you has know, had, backyard. If has had aphids and or on plants where it has that sooty mold, it gets over everything. And it's not plant. It could be your patio furniture. It could be anything, anything. And it's it's hard to get. Yeah, on. we've had it where people have seen it on their patios, on their decks. Um, it's hard to clean off of things. I've actually seen it coating road signs, which will obliterate them so you can't read what the sign says. Oh, my gosh. And that can be a dangerous thing as well. Right, right. Now, a friend of ours, Steve Leyland, we were we actually were talking yesterday, and he told me a scary story, and I believe what he said, that they came down his chimney, and he has a glass closure for his fireplace, and that there were like 10 or 12 of them gathered to come into his house. Now, is that I I got to believe him because I trust him, but that's really scary. That's like the stink bug issue or 10 times over. It's worse. Yeah, that's an interesting story. They're really not trying to get in your house to overwinter like the stink bug. 
um, the stink bug wants to overwinter in the wall space or, you know, anywhere right. that's protected, and they overwinter as adults. Then when it warms up, they wake up and they start moving around looking for plants to feed on other stink bugs to mate with. You know, it's part of their life cycle. But the lanternfly doesn't really do that. We know they'll gather on houses, and they may have been accumulating around his chimney because they like to accumulate on high um, objects. Okay. We think that's because they want to launch off of those objects and fly to other trees to feed on. Okay. And it may have something to do with their mating behavior, you know, to find each other. Okay. But I, I think in this case, probably some of these lanternflies just got down the chimney and wound up in that place, and there's nowhere for them to feed, so they'll die pretty quickly. Okay, because he, cause he, was, he was telling me stories about trying to spray them, and that they technically don't fly, they just hop long distances, I guess. They... They no, do. they fly better than we thought. Oh, that's that's <laughs> They really new. can fly. Okay. That's new. That's disappointing, to be honest. Uh, you know, going back to farmers, orchards, and, and vineyards, um, the the hops issue, I like beer. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting and a little more angry. Wine. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, I had read somewhere where that some uh, vineyards had had a – almost 90 percent uh destruction on their their vine crops uh am, am i getting that figure right yeah and we're trying to quantify that right now working with the grape growers so we know in one grower in particular who had really high feeding pressure in 2017 um many of his vines didn't survive through the winter oh boy so we believe that could be attributed to the fact that the lanternfly took so much sap out of the vines, it just weakened them. Okay. And that they're not, do they not feed on the leaves or they just sucker onto the onto the trunks or stems? Yeah, they don't feed on the leaves. Um, they drill right into the sap of the plant. So they have a mouth part that's like a straw that they insert right into the plant material and suck sap out. Okay. Mostly they're feeding on the woody parts of the plant. Okay, and they're, they're big. And one of the problems, like, for instance, at the garden center, we have people that see cabbage looper flying around over the broccoli plants, and they, oh, look how pretty, and, and I'm trying to yeah. kill it with them not watching. The actual insect is, is kind of pretty. They really are. Um, it's kind of a shame. They're, they're pretty and um, people have used, you know, their image in art, and I've seen it on, you know, even beer cans and <laughs> jewelry. Oh, no. They're pretty. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have to change that. <laughs> we're going to have to change that. They're, they're evil. Well, <laughs> I, I think it helps to know that um, so many people can identify them. Yeah. Because they're pretty and they're striking, yeah. it's helping people identify them and alert, you know, if they found it in new areas. Yeah, and that that actually on our YouTube channel we have a the I guess it's in cooperation with the New Jersey Nurserymen's Association. It's a poster about reporting if you see it, um, and that that's one thing. Like one of my questions is how has it not crossed the river um, into Jersey more than you know? I know there's a bunch of counties in New Jersey that are under quarantine. But I'm surprised, like, for instance, we're in Gloucester County, and we do not see it at all or hear about it um, Right. There, we know it's in three counties in New Jersey, right across the river from the Lehigh Valley and Bucks County. Um, but we haven't had reports from South Jersey yet. Okay. It's very important that everybody that's listening, if you see it, please report it. Try to capture it so we can get a positive identification on it. If you can't capture it, take a picture of it. You know, that will help us document the finding as well. Right. Right. And that's, I mean, getting the public to identify, and and right now, um, so we're talking about November, mid-November, they're dying off. Um, they are. Um, the cold temperatures are really slowing them down, but there are still alive adult lanternflies out there. 
Um, we won't have them all killed until we get a killing frost. Yeah, it has been actually kind of mild um, up to this point. When Let's uh, fast forward to spring for a moment. When people are planting vegetables and things like that, are they mostly attacking woody plants or will they attack people's vegetable gardens or flower gardens as well? We have seen them, especially in that young life stage, the nymphs in the spring, mm -hmm. in vegetable gardens and on flowering plants. In that stage, they seem to be able to feed and survive on just about any plant. And then they get a little more specialized in what they feed on later in their life cycle. And they and at the nymph stage, they look like almost a, it kind of looks like a spotted tick. But it's probably yeah, I've heard people describe them as looking like ticks. Um, one way to know that it's not a tick is if you poke at it and it jumps, <laughs> then you know it's not a tick because ticks can't jump. That 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 would drive some of our customers yes. to stop gardening <laughs> if they saw, had ticks that were jumping oh, at them. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, and then again, it's after their woody landscape plants. Ever, most of the time I've heard about deciduous plants. Is, are evergreens also a problem? We've seen them resting on evergreen plants. Um, I can't really say that I've seen them feeding on those evergreen plants, but I wouldn't uh, be surprised because they do feed on such a wide range of plant material, especially in their young life stages. But I see them more on deciduous trees than anything. It, it is a swarming insect that it, it just, you know, locust comes to mind, but it just, it will cover an area like where a tree trunk could be covered with the spotter and lanternfly. Yeah, it can um, cover tree trunks with thousands of insects, and it's, it's really amazing to see them do that. <laughs> that happens mostly when they're in their adult stage and they can fly and move around. But right. I've seen trees covered with nymphs, especially in the third or the fourth instar stage where they have red coloration. Right. And thousands of the fourth instars on one tree. Ugh, okay. That's one reason why we're so concerned. They build these super high populations, and that has to be affecting the health of those trees. Wow. Wow. Well, we're, we've are we got to take a break. We're going to be back with, with Emily in just a moment. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to help stop spread the spotter and lantern fly. Last year's windy, cold winter months were tough on your outdoor plants. Did you know that you can help your plants survive the ravages of winter? Bonide's Wilt Stop is the answer. This all-natural product, once applied onto your trees and shrubs, will put a clear coating on the plant, which protects plants from drying out. It prevents winter burn, salt damage, moisture loss, and also reduces transplant shock. Wiltstop seals the moisture in and keeps the cold, dry, damaging wind out. Wiltstop also prevents Christmas trees and wreaths from dropping their needles by sealing in the moisture. Extend the life of your Christmas greens by applying Wiltstop before you bring them inside or hang them outside. Bonide's Wolf Stop is available in a bonus size 40 ounce ready to use and in pint, quart, and gallon concentrated sizes. Wolf Stop Christmas tree and wreath is available in a pint ready to use for easy application to your live seasonal decorations. Bonide products are family made in America. Wolf Stop is available at these fine stores. Best Ace Hardware, all locations throughout Delaware. Baker's Hardware, Millsboro, Delaware, First State Seed, Nork, Delaware. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, we're back with Emily Schlackhammer uh, talking about the spotted lanternfly. Um, we touched on a little bit what they look like. They spotted, spotted wings. Give us a, a rundown of what the adults would look like right now. The adults right now have wings, 
And when you see them in nature, they have their wings folded and they're down over their back. They are kind of tan, almost mauvey in color. And then they have black spots on their wings. And at the tips of their wings, they have black lines that looks like netting. Hmm. So they'll mostly be on the trunks of trees right now. Okay. And that they do die off. The adults die off with the colder weather. That's right. Um, but what we're concerned with is having them spread by egg masses. Help, mm-hmm. help our listeners to identify egg masses and what they should do if they see them. Okay, so um, identifying the egg masses is really important. They're not easy to see at first. You almost have to learn to recognize them. Um, you can look online with some of our Penn State Extension information, and, and, and also and by the, the way, Pennsylvania I'm Department. sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but go online and and go ahead and Google it through Penn State. Your materials yeah. are excellent, easy to understand. It's not like so horticultural snobby that I can't understand it. It is consumer friendly, so I encourage well, thank everybody. Thank you for that. <laughs> it, it is great material. We materials. try to make it understandable and useful. Yep, yep. So, so if you look on Penn State or the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture's website, and they're easy to find just with a Google search, there are pictures of egg masses. And when the females first lay the eggs, um, she puts the eggs in rows. They're next to each other, and they almost look like little jelly beans or seeds lined up end to end. Hmm. Each egg mass has between 30 and 50 eggs in it. And then she covers the eggs with a secretion from her body that's a protective covering. And when she first deposits that, it's white, stark white. But very quickly it dries down to, again, this kind of tan. um, It almost has a little mauve tone to it, color. And it looks like a splooch of mud on the tree. Oh, boy. So sometimes she misses a few of the eggs, and you can see those little jelly bean-looking eggs protruding out from underneath. Mm-hmm. How, but not always. How long, she often how long would all it of them. be, um, the egg mass that she lays? I'm sorry, say it again? The size, would it be oh. like maybe an inch wide or a half an inch? or? It's about an inch long and maybe three quarters of an inch wide. Okay, so almost square. Well, they can vary, and that makes it difficult to teach people how they look because if I show you one picture... You know, it's kind of like a thumbprint. The next one is going to be a little different. Mm -hmm. Um, But once you start seeing a lot of them, as the people in the quarantine zone have been seeing, now can (laughs) I can I touch on the can I touch on the quarantine real quick? Um, Sure. New Jersey and Pennsylvania, it's a voluntary quarantine. Is that correct, or does it have teeth to it? Yeah, and Pennsylvania definitely has teeth to it. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture is the regulatory body, and the quarantine says you may not intentionally move any living life stage of the lanternfly oh boy. from within the quarantine area to outside. And if you intentionally violate that quarantine, they can levy fines. Wow. And it's on you know, you, everybody thinks plant material, but it's firewood, and it's and it's things you would never associate with an insect. Right? Absolutely, and that's why this insect is so worrisome. It can be firewood. It can be vehicles. Uh, I've seen them lay eggs on rusty metal, <laughs> uh, so equipment. Uh, we've seen egg masses on plastic, like, you know, the... Kids sets, the little play sets. Oh yeah, like the We've Fisher seen Price. We lay eggs on that. <laughs> um, you know, any virtually any solid object, rocks, landscaping materials, certainly trees. Right. So it can so be. So the list anywhere. goes on and on. Anywhere, and so yeah. if somebody sees this square, and it's kind of it, 
the ones that I've seen pictures of, like you said, they're they're kind of a tan gray. But there are some. I, it's almost contradicting. Where some they said that it does have a little bit of a sheen to it, and other ones say that there isn't. Is that just at different times when they've laid them? It's at different times when they're fresh. They have a little bit of a sheen to them, but then it dries down to look more like mud. Okay. Let's to complicate that, if it's in a spot where the rain is washing across the egg mast, the covering can weather away, and then you'll see the rows of eggs, like you know, like showing through that egg the covering. Okay. So, and in high density populations, they seem to choose trees that they really like, or objects that they really like. Right. And they'll lay one egg mass up against the next and the next and the next, and you'll get these big areas where they're all coalesced together. <laughs> and Tree of Heaven is one of the their most popular, uh, I guess, feed, they're feeding off of that, like, has been identified as right. a source. It's definitely or... a preferred host. And the Tree of Heaven is an invasive tree that was brought here from Asia many years ago. Um, it has the ability to survive in really challenging soils, uh, so people thought it would be a really good urban or street tree. Right. <laughs> and it, it does grow in those areas, but it has become horribly invasive. Right. Right. Like a lot of things that uh, we do, that we, they start out being a great idea, and then all of a sudden, not anymore. Uh, anybody right. have any bamboo out there? That, uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, so someone sees an egg mass. What do they do? Well, if they're outside of the quarantine area, we want you to take a picture of it and report it to the Department of Agriculture. Um, if you're within the quarantine area, our listeners from Montgomery County and Berks County, Bucks County, we want you to destroy that egg mass. How do you do so that? So you can simply crush it. Okay. I like to just pick up a rock or a stick, and if you smash them, the innards of the egg come out, and you can tell you're killing. You know, you're killing them. Okay, so you want to make an omelet out of it? Uh, <laughs> well, no. So, well, that, but you know, some uh, of the things I've heard is like, well, you scrape it with a credit card, and then you drop it into hand sanitizer. I mean, that's right. We're that not gonna that get might too be a neater way to do it. it. Yeah, but I, I can't see, like, if we want to, we want people on the ground, homeowners, to be actively pursuing this. We've got to make it easy for them. And, hit, and crushing them with a rock or a stick is doable. Once you mm -hmm. get more than three or four steps, it's going to say, yeah, that might be it. I don't know. Yeah. So just do whatever you can. And, and but. But even report it. Montgomery County is is where it's the worst right now. Or where would you say what county would be the worst? Um, I, I don't. I couldn't pick one county where it's the worst. Wow. Certainly, Berks County is where it started, mm -hmm. and Berks County is very heavily uh, affected by this. Wow. But it's in thirteen counties in Pennsylvania at this point. Lanc up in Lancaster County as well. In it is in Lancaster County. Mostly in the eastern side of Lancaster County. Okay. So, and I know Philadelphia, it's in Philadelphia, it's in Delaware County. It's like following the river, so it's ready to hop over into Jersey. Well, we know that it is across the river in three counties in right. New Jersey. Right. And again, some of the same things apply in New Jersey where there is a quarantine zone. You know, landscape guys, check your trucks. You know, anybody that's doing anything with firewood, check the firewood. We, we want to make mm -hmm. sure that we stop this thing in its tracks. Absolutely. And if people are traveling into the infested area and moving things out, mm -hmm. any items doesn't have to be, you know, landscapers are certainly important, but, but any businesses um, could easily transport it if they're not trying to be careful. Yeah, so carpenters, anybody working outside, you know, take this to heart because it can be a major, major uh, punch to to the farmers and the the orchards in this area. Right. So. And in Pennsylvania, we have a requirement for businesses to have a permit to travel to outside of the quarantine area. So anybody that 
travels in the tri-state area should have that permit. It's for businesses. Okay. Um, it's a free course. You take it from the Penn State website, and then you get a hang tag for your commercial vehicle. And um, if you're stopped by the authorities, that's proof that you're in compliance. All right. So you hear that, everybody. Do it. The course is simple. It's not, it's not, it's not something that's hard, but it's big-time awareness. Um, Emily, I want to thank you very much for, for giving us this information. Um, let's hope that uh, the next time we talk that it hasn't spread any further. Right. Well, thanks for the opportunity to get this information out to our listeners. Okay. And I encourage everybody to, to go online, search through Google. Some of the best materials are from the Pennsylvania side. Uh, New Jersey Nurseries Association does have a lot of the, the same information, but educate yourself so we can stop this, uh, this insect. All right, Emily, thank you uh, for coming on, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. High Yield Brand Bone Meal contains 10% slow-release natural phosphorus. It helps all plants to develop sturdy root systems and stimulate healthy growth. You'll use it every time you plant bulbs, but it also is an excellent supplement fertilizer for roses, flowers, and vegetable gardens. High Yield Bone Meal is sourced from steamed bone meal, which provides a clean, natural source of phosphorus. High Yield is brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome People, and is available at these great stores. Russell Garden Center, 600 New Road, Churchville, PA. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Well, we're back, folks, and we're going to talk about African violets. Oh, boy, this is a really nice topic here that we're going to talk about. Yeah, African violets, the most popular houseplant in the world. Wow. Talk about <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, right? wow. All right, so give me some history. Well, the first thing we, wa- mm-hmm. we want to talk about is the history of it, which is really interesting, Len. It all started in Tanzania, tropical Africa, in the mountains. Mm-hmm. And let me just first say that the botanical name is called St. Paulia, and there's a reason why it's called that. So, St. Paulia. Yes. Okay. And uh, so we want to know that in the beginning. But uh, it was first started by two gentlemen, and one of them was a German district commissioner. I'm sorry. Um, he was a German royal botanic gardens person, and uh, the other one was— Because um, he got—he was working there, and he got credit first. That's right. Although, Sir John Kirk is his name. Well, John Kirk is the English guy. The English that, guy, but, right? But what happened now? Now everybody listen. This this, is, this may be a little confusing, but it was the Royal Botanical Garden is where in England is where you would bring your specimens to get recognition. And during the 1800s, people were all over the world dispersed, whether they were missionaries or whether they were conquering other lands. You know that what did they used to say about uh, England that the sun never sets on the uh, right on the right. Ink, ink, the British Empire, British Empire. <laughs> and that all these people were were trying to get, find new plants and new animals right. and things, and that this guy it's not Captain Kirk from St- from, from right. Star Trek, no, it okay? <laughs> it's a, it's a different Sir John, uh, Kirk. Sir John Kirk, That's John right. Kirk, um, and so he found this and tried to get credit for it, but his specimens basically stunk. That's right. And they said, sorry. Sorry about that. You don't get it. So then the German guy stuck in, right? What's his name? Reverend W.E. Taylor. Oh, no, that's not the guy. 
Now, the district commissioner of what is today Tanzania, oh, okay. okay, that that uh, that is where the name St. Paulia comes from, right? Right, that's right, Len. Right, so he went, and he, even though it was about 10 years apart, he actually is the one who gets credit for discovering the African that's violet, right. and that was mid to late 1800s. 1880s, yes. So you think, you know, plants like that, you think were around longer than that. I, You know, it's like... No. So it's really... Pretty you know, young. So you think it's right after, right after yeah. the Civil War, so... Right. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. And I'm sorry. How how it moves, how all these uh, plants move from one area to the next. Right. It's really uh, amazing. Right. And sometimes it's not a good thing. Like we were just talking about Emily, where all of a sudden they bring a plant. It's the best thing since sliced bread. And it turns out to be an invasive weed that they can't get rid of. That's right. But not African violets. No. They've been around and um, a little bit. Yeah. And we enjoy them. Yeah. Now, talk about, uh, let's see, there is a society that's For, right. There's a society called the African Violet S- Society of America. That sounds serious. It is. <laughs> they're they're pretty uh, well known. And there's another one too. It's called the African Violet Society of Philadelphia. So we have two of them. Really? Yes. Uh, pretty amazing. So right here in Philly. Right here in Philadelphia. You know, we'll talk about that mm-hmm. yeah. at the end of this segment. But yeah. how? All right. I'm not good with African violets. Yeah, I me, kill them. Me neither. I, you aren't. <laughs> no. so then what are you doing wrong? I, I don't know. Well, that's so we're going to learn a little bit about that today, right? Right, how to take care of them, and, and how. Uh, one of the thing, one of the things that I was really interested in uh, was h- how do you water them, and once you buy your plant, the, you have to water uh, them. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <you have laughs> no, I'm sorry, that's a little <laughs> that's a little horticultural humor. That's right. <laughs> so, one of the interesting things is that you can use a wicking uh, form of watering, which is really interesting. Wicking. So yes. that means it... It's a, like a wick on your, um, you know, wicking it through using a, let's say, for instance, uh, a, uh, a little, uh, uh, what would you call it? A cord? Uh, like, yeah, like a cord, a synthetic right. cord. or So synthetic, you can't use cotton because no, cotton will rot. Rot, yeah, I don't want to get So what rat. do you do with the cord? Do you just put it in the bowl of water? No, you, you, uh, you yes, you first want to, Make it a little wet, so you know you'll have it uh, saturated. Right, and then you're going to um, take it and you're going to cut a piece of it, right, and you're going to um, place it in through the pot, the pothole at the bottom of the. So the drainage plant. hole of the pot, the you thread it through. The bottom, that's correct. And then do you go through the middle of the plant, or just go through the side of the plant? Go through the side of the plant. All right, All right. So, and then just pull it and up pull it to up, the top. Pull it up to the top to the edge. So like a sponge, it soaks up. That's right. From the water. From well, the water. but you have to have it sitting in water then, right? Or yeah, that's correct. You have to sit it in water. I mean, the, not not the actual uh, pot. You're going to have a, a But under, the, the under, string. The string. The string needs to water. sit in water. That's but correct. But you don't want the pot, the pot sitting itself. in water. So no, you have to have it raised that. above that. Raised. Yeah, that's correct. If okay. not, you're going to have rotted roots. Right. So right. you have to have that raised. I've seen it where there are ways that the they're actually in a... It's kind of pre-done, so it's mm. kind of like a self-watering concept. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and that they come they come that way, and that's it you, makes it easier to care for. It may right. cost you a couple dollars more because of the pot, mm. but it works a little better. And I've also seen where, yeah. you know, the little, like, for instance, you go to a deli and you buy, a, like, a small thing of cream cheese, and it comes in that's that right, plastic container. Mm-hmm. If you cut a hole in that. On the top. And, right, and right. you sit the pot in On there the so it hovers above the water, but the string is sitting in the sitting water. In, oh, that's a great idea, Len. Great idea. Beautiful, yes. Great you idea. It doesn't cost much. No, and no. also the, the humidity that collects there. That's right. Goes up through the plant as well. Right. And so you're not watering all the time. You, you're just letting that water sit there a little bit until it dries up again, and okay. then you water it back up again. What if you're lazy like me and you just want to water them from the top? Well, you can. That, that, but you have to be really careful because you don't want to get the leaves wet. Okay. 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 And so you uh, just water it, and then and you you let it go a little dry. A little dry, yes. But not no, crispy, no. you know, where it shrinks. Right. Now, that, yeah. then you got to you know, kind of soak it and, right. and yeah. take you want care it, of you it, want it more, You know, you don't want it soggy either, so you got you have to be careful with that. Right. Okay. And at least eight hours of darkness each day in order to get them to bloom. Now, that's yeah. something that people don't realize. My, yeah. my African violet never blooms. Never blooms, yeah. Maybe that's you're giving it too much light. That's right. 
You, you have know? to be careful with that. So you, you have to realize that and make sure that you're giving it not as much as you think you're giving it. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And people, when they're watering, make sure that you leave a little bit of water. Like if you're watering over the top and you don't do the, the wicking uh, watering, that you leave a little bit of water in the saucer, enough so that it it is gone in 30 minutes. If you put too much in, then you're going to kill it. Right. But enough so that that water that's sitting in the saucer is absorbed within 30 minutes. That's correct. That's and it. the plant also likes indirect light, so you don't want to put it in direct light. That could be a uh, you could hurt the plant that way. Right. Too much sun. Too much sun. Burn it up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one rule of thumb is mm-hmm. that if you can barely see a shadow of your hand over the vi- the African violet, mm-hmm. then that's the right amount of, of light. Oh, that's great. And great you want to clean know. it, deadhead it once in a while. That's clean, right. Clean we call it, it grooming. Right? Right. <laughs> that's right. So you're fancy. Is that a fancy word. And by the way, the African Violet Society of Philadelphia, they are great folks. They are active. Okay. We just yes. missed the annual show in plant sale, which oh, was uh, oh. about a month ago. That's right. Um, go to phillyviolets.org. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll see their, their Christmas party is coming up. Wow. Um, so, again, get in touch and join these folks because they'll swap rare plants and rare varieties. Oh, yes. And how many varieties do we say? Oh, thousands. Ten, ten Th- thousand, over 10,000. Thousands, thousands. thousands. Yeah, wow. Thousands. Now you got some choice there, right? Yeah, you really <laughs> do. So, again, wow. that's phillyviolets.org. Uh, .org. Take a look. Yeah. Take a look. What a great place. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Are you tired of the mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonite has the answer, mouse magic. Mouse magic is an all natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse magic has a pleasant aroma which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse magic repels by smell and works with an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room and your mouse free for up to two months. Available in a four pack box or a 12 pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonite products are family made in America. Mouse magic can be found at these fine stores. Clark Seed, Kenton, Delaware, Southern States Co-op, Middletown, Delaware, Ronnie's Garden World, Smyrna, Delaware. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. <laughs> uh, well, you know what's coming up, right? Oh, boy. Uh, Black Friday's yes, coming it up is. soon. But, uh, you know what? A lot of gift time, huh? Yeah, but Ooh. you know what? Right now, everybody's right. going to be going to Thanksgiving dinner. Right. And we've got some great ideas for hostess gifts um, uh-huh. to bring with you that That's are plant fair. related. That's right. Now, an, an easy choice mm-hmm. is uh, it's simple. it's a paley mum paley. Pa- yeah, it is a it's just a real pretty uh, right. like it's a little on the brown side with with yellow highlights. Right. Very pretty single right. flowers, and it's a florist mum. It's a florist mum. Now, the difference okay. between a florist mum and, and a say, mom. yeah, like a hardy mum, like right. the hardy mum's that big dome of flowers. Yeah, big. Where a florist mum right. is five different uh, cuttings okay. that are trained, and they, they'll go and they'll pinch the foliage so that they have a top flower of five, basically, it's five clusters. There'll be other buds that are there, okay. but it's just the flowers are much, much larger. Because they put all that energy oh, into nice. only a couple of flowers rather than an entire. That's impressive. It is. It's a lot of work. And, and how many colors are there? There's oh, two. It's, well, in I'm that two, one, it, it's there's one double, flower, but okay. it has a, a little bit of a contrast to it. Yeah, which you don't see much in the, the other uh, perennials. No, no, no. But I mean, you know what? The other annuals. 
people are sick of mums by this time. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> Huli and I were talking, but yeah. best choice is going to be a succulent, right? Oh, I think so. Yeah. How easy is that? I don't know. Tell me. Oh, you don't even have to do anything. So you Pretty give much. the gift, and they, they have it for longer than until it's done blooming. Like that That's mom, right. once it's done blooming, yeah. you kind of throw it in the trash and say, that was nice. Yeah, Laura, oh. she brought in hers today, and it wasn't even in soil. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> there you go, and it was she still it, alive. It was still alive. It was incredible how much they, so little uh, moisture they need. So minimal care. Minimal care, yes. So easy. So easy. Now I'm the money guy, so they're cheap too. Yeah, they're they yeah, are four yeah. bucks. You four can get bucks. some. Yes. <laughs> wow. know. How cheap is that, right? You know, and the fun <laughs> thing too is, is if if you want to do something special, you right. can take succulents and plant them like in a martini glass, uh, or you can do some that's the beauty cool of these. things. You can put it anywhere you want, pretty yeah, much. E- even like I've seen them in in like old boots and boots? things. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if you want to put a boot on the table. <laughs> it might smell, but, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, not, yours mine. <laughs> anyway, Thanks, Glenn. Like. Think about like an antique chipped bowl, like right. flea market type thing. Oh, yes. So you don't have to be so concerned with making sure it has, you, you don't want to overwater it, but yeah. it's very forgiving. We have one here. It's called the Plant Amp. Is that pretty cool or not? Yeah. I, that, that, that's a, a great thing. Mm-hmm. We're going to go into that. Um, a little later that, on. But that's uh, another show. That's another show. Yeah. yeah. It's coming. <laughs> How about, uh, you know, you take it in. It's Thanksgiving, so you put it into a, say, a cast iron pan or something mm-hmm. like that, You're something right. some cookery right. or something like that that you would use in the kitchen so, so they could keep of, it in their kitchen. And yeah. every time they see it, they're going to think how wonderful it was to have you over for Thanksgiving dinner. Wow. Yeah. Really good. Yep. So that's succulents, easy to take care of. But, you know. It goes in a lot of places. Yep. Orchids. Orchids. How about an orchid? Wow, I love orchids. I do too. I'm they're gonna, much easier again, than people think. Yeah, they are easy, aren't they? They are. They are. With uh, with orchids, it's it's you got to think all of these plants, and we give you a lot of history about where plants come from for a reason, like the African violets being from the mountainous region in Tanzania oh. in Africa. That okay, so that's where it naturally grows without any help from man. Okay, right. but what we have to do when we bring it into our homes is a different story. Well, what we have to do is emulate that well, environment, that area. You know, a mm-hmm. little bit of different humidity. You don't want it too wet. Yeah. You don't too much. And that the quality. same thing with orchids. Mm-hmm. Orchids are growing in the crux of trees. Mm-hmm. They don't really have a lot of soil around them, and that you want to make sure that you're using the right soil with orchids. But right. these are going to be a gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. you you want to keep them a little bit yeah almost that you would run their roots into bring it to the sink run its roots underwater once in a while right. and then let it drip down and then bring it back a lot of people have a problem where the all of a sudden all the flowers drop off and i had read a interesting thing that, that it's the if you have natural gas like if you have it near a burner or you oh have it near fruit that really? ethylene gas oh, will make gas. those flowers mm-hmm. fall off so all that? of a sudden they just fall off and you won't even know that that's right that's right yes. um also if the flowers are looking wilted and they kind of fall off mm-hmm. all at the same time and we call that an environmental issue right. um that means that it's not necessarily an insect or a disease but it's kind of the conditions they're being put under right. um it check the potting medium see if the plant is too wet a lot of times where people want to over care for it and that you want to give it, let it dry out a little bit between right. giving it too much water. So it likes a, it likes a little bit of hot and humid. Well, it likes a bit no, of humidity. No, no. Humid. 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 Not necessarily hot. Home okay. environment's perfect. 65, 70. Yep. 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 You know, another plant which we sell more of for Thanksgiving than uh, even mums and such are poinsettias. Boy, yep. <laughs> that's another one. Yep, bring bring your poinsettia, and it makes a, a great gift. Yes. But, you know. They come in all sizes, too. Yeah, come, but keep in mind, mm-hmm. the poinsettia that you give at Thanksgiving right. may not look I, as good at Christmas, at Christmas as yeah. it does when you hand it off. Um, poinsettias, it's the bracts that are actually the flower, and they, right. they are actually what people think are the flower. Flowers are leaves. But yeah. it, they're actually leaves, yes. and that the centers may drop out by the time you get to Christmas. Uh, they dry up a little bit. But think about think about that. It's something mm-hmm. to give a plant as a sure. gift 
succulents is is what we're picking as our number one gift to give your hostess Mm -hmm. as just a thank you and the best part is is every time that they look at it they'll think of you that's right all right we'll be back right after this the bird sanctuary at bloomers home and garden center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds we carry a flock of feeders like the brome squirrel proof feeder which has a lifetime guarantee Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Well, then, we're... uh talk about what we're thankful for we're coming up to thanksgiving thanksgiving right thanksgiving right that's right that's what it's all about that's right well being where we are and we're surrounded by actually products right now that's right you know one of the things i'm thankful for is being involved within an industry that is somewhat wholesome where it's a it's filled and and this goes out to to all of you independent garden centers out there um, that are family owned. They make sacrifices that their customers don't know anything about. Right. But just that, they're just good people. Oh the salespeople that we deal with, right. um, the their family businesses too. Most sure. of them. Sure. You know they all they aren't all monsters like yeah. Scotts and, <laughs> and and such, but right. yet even those salesmen understand right. the independence and the sacrifices they've made, and That's right. and how fortunate they are when there are independents to tell the story to the That's customer, right. and so they understand things like the history of African violence. That's right. Yes. You know, how about you, Julio? Oh, let me tell you what, Len. This past year. Mm-hmm. It's been really lovely working. I spend a lot of time, most of the time, with you now, and <laughs> yeah. it's been. I'm great. sorry for complaining. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and it's been really a blessing for me. Oh, that's uh, nice. Thank it, you. It's like having a, a father. Father, it, it wait a minute. You're older than I am. I know, but I'm telling you right now, you're like my dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and because uh, you show me so much, and you, uh, you, you, uh, you're always there for me. And well, I really appreciate that. It goes man. both ways. It, it, it does. It goes it both does. ways. And where I work is a beautiful place with a lot of flowers, a lot of beautiful, not only flowers, a lot of beautiful people that I work with. They absolutely are. And you that's something, I mean? too. I'm thankful for the people that we work with. Yes. You know, uh, all of them. I mean, Sandy, we've been Sandy, working together for how long oh, now? So long. I mean, she calls me her work husband. And I'm and I, <laughs> and sorry, Art, but uh, I appreciate right. it very much. <laughs> we understand. Right. <laughs> Stephanie, her daughter. Stephanie. Uh, Cara. Cara. D- Donnie, uh, Donnie. Donnie. They're, Donnie at Bloomers. You want to know anything about landscape and want to have anything installed, call up Bloomers and yeah, talk to Donnie. It's been wonderful this year. Donnie yes. is a can do. Yes, he can. He can do. He can. Uh, Roger, Roger. Roger bails me out. Oh, all the time. Roger, huh? <laughs> is, uh, he, uh, he helps me within the office. Yes. And Chris. And Chris. Chris, Chris oh, has okay. got courage that nobody else at Bloomers does Our because she has girl. to come tell me when things need to get paid. That's right. And she knows that uh, <laughs> it may not be the right time, but right. she just goes and faces it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I tell Pat, you what. Oh, Pat, yeah. oh, he, he Pat. likes to be on that roof, Mr. up on Fix that roof. <laughs> yes, Mr. Fix It. Mr. Fix It. Uh, we love Pat. Yeah. yeah he's and, incredible. And again, there, there are so many people, even, you know, young kids. Yeah, Bert. Like, you yeah. know, Bert. Oh, Bert's another, the man. Yeah. Another Bert, sing-along We're going to have huh? Bert on because he constantly sings yeah, that's right. uh, Him at and the Pat. store. So if, <laughs> if, you, if you see see Bert, uh, uh, if you know yeah. any old rock, that's, 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 it's that's coming right. from Bert's mouth. Oh, my. Um, but Gabby and Kevin and yeah, Caleb and 
uh, Shirley. 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 Oh, uh, the she, bird girl. She she has been on the show here. Shirley Spurbeck. Nice. She has taught me more about birds yeah. than every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 amazing how much she knows, and it's not just about birds. I mean, she is a plant yeah. person and yeah, a true does. horticulturist at yeah, heart. Yeah. Yeah, lovely uh, girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know, I hope we're not leaving everybody out, anybody out. But yeah. it's it it is a collection in that we are a team, and even a family. more than that, we're a family. Yeah, yeah. it's it's really a, a, we're so close now. It's it's really beautiful. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. and that uh, it's hard work, and that it is very good, work. good you know, hard work. Huh? Yeah. It is yeah. good hard work. Yes. Uh, wholesome. Yes, it is. Wholesome. Yes, it is, and that's what the, an independent garden center is about. Yep. You know, it's about the people, and we love everybody who comes in, right, Len? That's we, exactly we, we right. take care of them. Because like they are ours. our family, and we are part of their community. The community. And, and I hope everybody listening out there, they understand that the Independent Garden Center are members of their community. Yes. That, yes. you know, they don't take their money and run and bring it to Atlanta, right. like Home Depot or Arkansas, right. like, like Walmart. Right. And that, I mean, those guys are great retailers, but— Small independent garden centers, oh, yeah. it's different. they love their customers. We love our customers. And yes. that they are hurt when they are they fail them, but right. they are also enthusiastic when they have yeah. success. Yep. Make sure you are favoring your right. independence because those guys are, believe me, making sacrifices yes. that you don't know about just to make sure that they can contribute to their community. And that's why I, I love coming into work every day and, <laughs> and being with my fellow workers and with my customers. And they, yeah. they, they know that. Yeah. They know that. And how much do we get educated by our customers? Oh, a lot. Yeah. Quite a bit, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Julio, before we start crying, oh, I, I want to be I'm also mention I'm thankful for Brett. Brett, thank you. Brett, Brett yes. you you are the man. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brett. Uh, and then also and Tim, 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 Sam, Sam. Yes. Walk Laura. Us this. Yes. Laura, yep. Yeah. 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 Whole gang here. They're wonderful. All right. People. We'll cut it out. We're going to start crying. Yeah. <laughs> but it's this Thanksgiving. Make sure that you're uh, thankful. Yeah. That yes. you're thankful to be telling the people that are around you. Yes. Yes. All right. We're going to be right back and wrap up the show right after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, this is the close of the show. All right. Boy, oh, boy, lots wow. of stuff. That Emily Schwackhammer is, oh. she has facing a major issue. Um, everybody out mm -hmm. there, make sure that you are helping a, yes. and grab it and listen. Mm -hmm. There are sometimes pretty insects need to go, right. and that these That's are it. a major pest. Major. Right? Spotter and lantern uh -huh. fly, we need to eradicate them because yes. they will mm -hmm. be a major uh, pest Huge. to the the economy oh. for the farmers and all of the people Critical. that have to deal with it. Yeah. Bad. Mm -hmm. Bad, bad, bad. Be bad, vigilant bad. out there. Be, that, be vigilant. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And again, we, we're... African violets. Oh boy! Uh, what was the name of that German guy? Saint Pauli. Saint, I remember him. That's right. <laughs> and that the the actual botanical name is named after, after him. him. Yes. And it turns out that it was his father that was the uh, guy who brought, brought the seeds over. to the uh, Royal, Royal Botanical, Botanical Garden. Garden. Anyway, yeah. so he got credit. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Wow, great guy. Yep. Good. He, that was a good one. Yeah, that was. That was a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and again, it's uh, make sure you're telling the folks that you're uh, that you're going to your Thanksgiving dinner, or if yes. you're or for your hosting, hosting, yes, you know, well, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I know that I'm not cooking, and I want to, you know, <laughs> so if you're bring uh, bring them a, a little something, a little something, a little bit more say than you, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> just so you say thank you. That's correct, <laughs> right? Well, next week. 
Next wow. week, ugh, November 27th here, Ooh, 24th, I'm sorry. 24th, yeah, wow. Yeah, it's a day after Black Friday. Oh, boy, look out. Here it is. Here it is wow. already, huh? Christmas. Ooh. Yes, it is, around the bend. <laughs> but we're on our next week's show, we're going to talk about fresh garland and greens. Nursery plants with Christmas berries. Uh, wow. why there are tons that, that we're going to, I'm going to mm. enjoy that. Yeah. We're going to talk about amaryllis and paper whites and a little bit of their history. Yes, sir. Black Friday's coming up, huh, Len? Yeah, we were, we're just talking about, about that. for the gardener, huh? Uh, that's wow. right. I've got my Christmas list for gardening items. It's great. And then we're going to talk about using Wilt Stop anti-transparent to preserve Christmas greens. Oh, Real important. Yes, sir. Brett, thank you. Great job thank as you, always. Thank you, Brett. All right. Join us next week, and we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. 